Hello and welcome to the Battle in Barrow and a uh, return of the Fighting Fantasy Let's Play videos. Um, haven't done one for a while. The last one was last year's Halloween month with uh, Vault of the Vampire. I thought I'd return with a classic um, Death Trap Dungeon, uh, Game Book 6. So uh, I thought we'd we'll try this. Um, yeah, I thought we'd enter and we'll see what happens, see how far I can get. Um, yeah. Uh, reason I can't remember how to uh, play so off to a good start uh, yeah we don't need to know the rules uh, play death trap manga he lives and dreamed it little has been yeah we're gonna do that free read it's interesting old school cheater <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant! Reading the uh, free, uh, free read, an old school cheater. Um, bench mode. I uh, read printed on mode. Difficulty mode. Oh, I'm not going to do this. I want to play exactly as it is. Um, so we're just going to play adventure probably. Uh, yeah, so we're going to play the adventure mode just because that's vanilla and that's how I kind of want it. Let's roll my stamina. Uh, um, yeah, okay, that's cool. Determined skill. Let's roll for skill. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, can I can I re-roll? Can I re-roll? <laughs> re <-roll? laughs> oh, maybe I should have done the old school sheet method. I'm sure that would have to re-roll on this. Okay, let's roll for luck. That's <sighs> not good either, is it? Blimey. That was terrible. Take a potion. Um um, 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 I'm kind of thinking it's going to be a potion of skill. Strength you get, um, provisions with. Don't really try, try and avoid using luck as much as possible, but you sometimes just get lucky during the course of the game. Skill that low. Skill it is. Here we go. Begin your adventure with a sword, lever armor. Yeah. So it just rules. I need this. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. Uh, to make sure. To me. Ten provision for it. Saying you're being a very soon. Okay. Him. Despite its name, Fang was an ordinary small town in the northern province of Chiangmi. Mi? Chiangmi? Situated on the banks of the River Cog, it made a convenient stopover for river traders and passengers throughout most of the year. A few barges, rafts, and sometimes even a large sailboat could usually be found moored at Fang. But all that was long ago before the creation of the Trial of Champions. Now, once a year, the river is crammed with boats as people arrive from hundreds of miles around hoping to witness the breaking of an ancient tradition in Fang and see the victor in the Trial of Champions. Each year, warriors and heroes come to Fang to face the test of their lives. Survival is unlikely, yet many take the risk for the prize is great, a purse of 10,000 gold pieces and the freedom of Chiang Mai forever. However, to become a champion is no easy task. Some years ago, a powerful baron of Fang called Sukumvit decided to bring attention to his town by creating the ultimate contest. With the help of the townspeople, we construct a labyrinth deep in the hillside behind Fang, from which there was only one exit. The labyrinth was filled with all kinds of deadly tricks and traps and the loathsome monsters. Sukumvit uh, had designed it in a meticulous detail so that anybody hoping to face his challenge would have to use their wits as well as their weapon skill. When he finally was satisfied that it was all was complete, he put his labyrinth to the test. He picked 10 of his finest guards, fully armed, and they marched into the labyrinth. They were never seen again. The tale of the ill fated guards soon spread throughout the land. It was then that Sukumvit announced the first trial of champions. Messages and news sheets carried his challenge. 10,000 gold pieces and the freedom of Chiang Mai forever to any person surviving the perils of the labyrinth for Fang. The first year, 17 brave warriors attempted the walk as it later become known. Uh, not one reappeared. Ooh. 
As the years passed, the trial of champions continued. It attracted more and more challenges, and spectators Fang prospered and would prepare itself months in advance for the spectacle it hosted each year. The town would be decorated, tents erected, dining halls built, musicians, dancers, fire eaters, illusionists, and every sort of entertainer hired, and the entries registered from hopeful individuals intent on making the walk. The week leading up to the festival found the people of Fang and its visitors in wild celebration. Everybody sang, drank, danced, and laughed until the day of the trial broke and the town thronged to the gates of the to the labyrinth to watch the first challenger of the year step forward to face the trial of champions. Going. Having seen one of Sukhumvit's challenge flies now to a tree, you decide this year you will attempt the walk. For the last five years, it, it, you have been attracted to it, not for the rewards, but the simple fact that nobody has ever emerged victorious from the labyrinth. You intend to make it this year in which a champion is crowned. Gathering up a few belongings, you set off immediately. What do we have here? Options map. Venshi. Quickly. Provisions times 10. Yeah, so that's that's nice. That's nice. Uh, that is going to keep us going. Ooh, because we can take a bit of punishment. Well, we aren't very skillful. Um, hmm. okay. Two days walk takes you to the west coast where you enter the cursed Port Black Sands. Wasting no time in that city of thieves, you buy your passage on a small boat sailing north to where the river Quok meets the sea. And from there, you raft up the river for four days until you finally arrive in Fang. The trial begins in three days time and the town is almost hysterical mood of excitement. You register your entry with the officials and are given a violet scarf to tie around your arm, informing everyone of your status. For three days you enjoy Fang's greatest hospitality and treated like a demigod. During the long merriment you almost forget your purpose in Fang. But the evening before the trial and the magnitude of the task ahead begins to dominate your thoughts. Later, you are taken to a special guest house and shown to your room. There was a splendid four-poster bed with satin sheets to help you rest, but there was little time for sleep. Just before dawn, the trumpet call wakens you from your vivid dreams and flaming pits and, and giant black spiders. Minutes later, there is a knock to your door and a man's voice rings out saying, The challenge begins soon. Be ready to leave in ten minutes. Okay. You climb out of bed and walk over to the window uh, and open the shutters. Already people are thronging in the streets, uh, moving quietly through the morning mist. Spectators on their way to the labyrinth, no doubt, hoping to find good vantage points to which to watch the competitors. You turn away and walk over to a wooden table on which your trusty sword lies. You pick it up and cut the air with a mighty sweep. Wondering what beasts its sharp edge may soon have to meet, then you open the door into the corridor and a small man greets you with a low bow as you emerge from the bedroom. Please follow me, he says. He returns to his left and walks quietly towards the stairs at the end of the corridor. Leaving your guest house, he darts down the narrow uh, alleyways between houses and you soon walk quietly to keep up with him. Soon and you have to walk quickly to keep up with him. Soon you come into a wide dirt road lined with cheering crowds. When you see your violet scarf, they cheer even louder and start showering you with flowers. The long shadows cast by the people in front of you shrink as the bright yellow sun rises higher in the morning sky. Standing there in front of the noisy, vibrant crowd, you feel strangely alone, aware of your coming ordeal. Suddenly you feel a tug on your shirt and see your small guide eagerly beckoning you to follow him. Head you see the looming hillside with the dark mouth of a tunnel disappearing into the inner depths. As you get closer you notice two great stone pillars on either side of the tunnel entrance. The pillars are covered with ornate carvings. Arriving serpents, demons, deities, each seeming to scream a silent warning to those who pass beyond them. You see a Baron Sukovic 
Sukumvit himself standing by the entrance waiting to greet contenders in the trial of champions. You count five others standing proudly in line, their violet scars displayed for all to see. There are two bare-chested barbarians dressed in furs and they stand completely motionless, their legs straight and slightly apart. Arms thrust forward to rest on the hilts of their long uh, double-headed axes. Uh, as we can play this in... Where is it? Mood? Dungeon Delve? No, that's fine. Maybe we can't. Book, here we can. Retro mode? Yeah, we can play a scene. Playing retro mode, so we can play it like that. Just gonna have a little. What does that actually do? Okay, don't know what that does. Sort of there. Retro mode, like that. Right, and classic, we can play it in. Italy classic, I mean? No. Oh, there used to be a way, I'm sure, where you could uh, flip over. Well, let's go find one. Who looks the most unskillful? Yeah, I'm sure. Delete classic images. No. Okay. Maybe we can't. I'm sure, we can get that into color mode or something. But we're going to play it like this. This is how we're playing it. Uh, a bit of visual interest. Yeah. So here we go. Uh, a sleek elven woman with golden hair and feline green eyes is adjusting the cross belt of daggers wrapped around her leather tunic. Of the two remaining men, one is covered from head to foot in iron plate armor with a plumbed plumed helmet and a crested shield the other is coated in black robes his dark eyes show him between swaths of his black face scarves long knives a wire a garrote and other oh, go uh, silent death weapons hung from his belt the five contenders acknowledge your arrival with almost imperceptible nods of the head and you turn to face the exorbitant crowd for the last time. Suddenly a hush falls over the crowd as Baron Sukumvit steps forward holding six bamboo sticks. You draw one from his outstretched hands and read the word fifth. Then the trial begins. The knight is first. He salutes the crowd before disappearing into the tunnel and is followed half hour later by the elf. Next goes the barbarian and then the dark assassin. Now it is your turn to salute the crowd. Holding your violet scarf aloft, you take one final deep breath of cool, fresh air before turning to pass between the stone pillared gateway into Sukhumvit's corridors of power to face the unknown perils on the walk through the mighty Baron's Death Trap dungeon. Wow, that's taken half of this video's uh, runtime length at Redis. Um, I would say, uh, I wish, is it Tin Man Games make these? Uh, they, you could sort of pay for a premium add-on where you'd have uh, some sort of narrator I don't know if that's possible reading it rather than me because I'm not the best so uh, anyway off we go uh, I'll see what happens now if I uh, run it into this puts more into a book mode which I'd prefer to look at that yeah, I'm sure there was a way somewhere recent where you could Put it into perhaps I'm perhaps it was the full standalone version you could do that in and not this. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Anyway, let's carry on. Oh no, oh no, how do I get out of this? Zoom. Oh yeah, didn't want to do that. What a mistake to make it. Okay, so off we go. We are just now going to. Uh, we're gonna carry on. We're gonna carry on. We're only on one halfway through the video. <laughs> we want to make these about half hour a piece, see. And what are we on? Sort of 15 minutes? Yeah, so 
successful gig. The clamour of the excited spectators gradually fades as you venture deep into the gloom of the cavern tunnel. Large crystals hang from the tunnel roof at 20 meter intervals, radiating a soft light just enough for you to see your way. As your eyes gradually become accustomed to the near darkness, you begin to see movement all around, spiders and beetles crawling up and down, the chiseled walls disappear quickly into the cracks and crevices as they sense your approach. Rats and mice scurry along the floor ahead of you. Droplets of water into small pools with an eerie plopping sound, which echoes down the tunnel. The air is cold, moist and dank. After walking slowly along the tunnel for about five minutes, you arrive at a stone table standing against the wall on your left. On it there are six boxes, one of which has your name printed on the lid. Yeah, right. Now, I'm not going to lie, for years when I used to play this, I used to ignore this uh, straight away because it's Death Trap Drundren. It's going to be a trap, isn't it? But no, apparently this time it's nice. We're going to open it. The lid of the box comes off easily. Inside are two pieces two gold pieces and a note written on a piece of paper, parchment paper addressed to you. After placing the gold in your pocket, you read the message which says, well done, at least you have the sense to stop and take advantage of a token of aid given to you. Now I can advise you that you will need to find and use several items of if you hope to pass triumphantly through the death, tap, death trap dungeon assigned Sukumvit. Memorizing this and writing the note, you tear it into tiny pieces and continue along north of the tunnel. After walking down the tunnel for a few minutes, you come to a junction. A white arrow painted on one wall to point west. On the floor, you can see wet footprints made by those entering before you. It was hard to be sure, but it looks as though three of them followed the direction of the arrow, while one went east. So the majority of them decided to follow the arrow, one decided to go east. So, I'm gonna go east. I'm gonna be uh, follow the only person. I don't wanna get attacked by multiple different contenders. That's free one way, one the other. So, I'm gonna go east. Hey, you can see a large obstruction on the tunnel floor. Though it's too dark to make out exactly what it is, wet, the wet footprints you've been following carry on towards the obstruction. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with the plan. You see the obstruction is a large brown boulder-like object and you touch it with your hands and you're surprised to find it is soft and spongy. Will you try to climb over it or wish to slice it with your sword? Oh, we are going to climb over it. You clamber onto the soft boulder, half expecting to be engulfed by it at any moment. Getting over it is difficult as your limbs sink into its soft casing, but eventually you manage to struggle over it, relieved to be back on firm ground you head east the tunnel makes a sudden turn to the left and heads north for as far as you can see the footprints you are following start to peter out as the tunnel becomes gradually drier soon you are beyond the dripping roof and pools of the floor and you notice the air becomes hotter and you find yourself painting even though you're walking quite slowly in the small recess on the left hand wall you see a section of bamboo standing on its end Lifting it down, you see it's filled with clear liquid. Your throat is painfully dry and you're feeling dizzy from the heat in the tunnel. Do you wish to drink the liquid? Of course I wish to drink strange liquid that I find in somewhere called Death Trap Dungeon. If you do not wish to risk drinking the liquid and you'd rather continue north. Hmm. Let's have a look at the map. It does a map for me, doesn't it? Ah, it's this. Yeah, I always remember this. Yeah, this to me, this map isn't very hand, health handy. I'd like a because uh, eastern path, but it's like northwest. <laughs> really, that should be east. And now we've gone. To... Yeah, so I don't find the map in these games very helpful. I'm going to drink. See what happens. What's the worst going to happen? The water in the bamboo is refreshingly is welcomingly freshening. You gain one stamina. I haven't lost any, yeah, have I? See, would you? I've played this so many times, I don't think I've lost any stamina by this point. I wonder if I hmm. Anyway, anyway, you can always remember the beginning part of this game fairly well later on. Ooh, so this first bit will be a bit 
not as exciting as it could be. A lot of introduction reading, a lot of me getting used to things. Hopefully, after that, it will be better. It contains a magical solution which will enable you to be exposed to the melting point temperature without harm. This guide in the bamboo, you start off north in good spirits. That is excellent. Uh, where are we now? Um, temperature continues to rise. You find yourself dripping with sweat as you struggle on. The heat intensifies until it feels like a white hot heat, a white heat, and becomes so unbearable you begin to pass out. If you drank the liquid from the bamboo pipe, I did. Yay! Low temperature in the tunnel is higher than you can normally tolerate. The liquid from the bamboo pipe keeps you alive, so you'd be dead already if you didn't drink it. So that's cool. Uh, Mercifully, the temperature now starts to drop rapidly and soon feels almost cool again. On the right hand side of the tunnel is a closed door. It has a small iron plate in it, which you might possibly open. When you're trying to door, slide the iron plate, continue up north. Well, we could have to examine this. And I want to try the door without looking in the plate. If we can see into the room first, that'd be good. The small plate slides open easily, and you find yourself peering into a room with a deep pit in the floor behind the door. On the opposite wall there are two iron hooks, one of which hangs on a coil of rope. You wish to open the door, jump over the pit and take the rope. Yum. Actually now I can't remember this bit after what I did. My Dunning Kruger effect and strip full effect there. I was like, yeah I remember the beginning of this really easy now. I'm like, ooh, I'm gonna try it. Kind of want the rope like so ironically I want the rope for jumping over pits really and I've got to jump over a pit to get in the rope. So yeah, let's do it. What, what's the worst gonna happen? Door swings open the room and you step back and jump out of the pit. Put a rope in your rope in your backpack and jump over back over the pit and leave the room and head north. There you go. Easy. I was like, whoa, hello, Mr. Hawk. Head you see the tunnel turn sharply to your left and you turn the corner and almost bump straight into two fierce looking orcs armed with morning stars and wearing leather armour. You are totally unprepared as you draw your sword. One of them swings its morning star at you. Ooh, that's what it does. Four. You rolled a four. To 189. It's where that uh, uh, cheaty option come in handy, I guess. Orcs morning star sinks agonizing into your left thigh. You lose three stamina points. Ow. Oh, okay. Yes, well. You're still alive. You stagger backwards, but manage to regain your balance time to defend yourself. Unfortunately, a tunnel was too narrow for both orcs to attack at once. You've got to fight. Okay, let's do this. Right. So my skill is better than that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Two more hits. Okay, now I'll do that three more times at the other orc. Lucky your stamina's two more times at the other orc, and his skill is higher than the other one. Oh, he's got me. Ouch. I think that's me. Got him. Yep. Okay, one more time. One more time. One more good roll. That looks good to me. Right. Well, normally, I'm not too worried about fighting fantasy combat, uh, but this one, um, you know, I'm I don't have the skill really <laughs> to be cocky in a fight this time. Anyway, you stagger backwards but manage to regain your balance on defense. Unfortunately, you don't know, oh yeah, if you win, you that. Inside one of York's packets, you find one gold piece and a holding wood troop. You put the funds in your backpack and set off west. Okay. As you walk along, droplets of water again start falling from the tunnel ceiling. You see wet footprints made by the same boots that followed you earlier heading west. The footprints lead to a closed iron door in the right hand side of the tunnel. I do not seem to go any further. Do you wish to open the door? Or do you wish to keep going west? Oh, just do. So we're doing the footprints again. Yeah, let's go in the door. Well.
The door opens into a large chamber where you are shocked to see one of your rivals who has obviously met a sudden gory death. It is one of the barbarians and he's impaled on several long spikes which are fixed to a frame that has sprung up out of the floor. A lot of rubbish and debris litters the floor concealing the hidden tripwire which he must have stepped on and thus released the spiked frame. In the far wall is an alcove in which you can see a silver goblet standing on a small wooden table. Will you walk over and search the barbarian? Walk over towards the alcove. Close the door. I'm in here now. Um. Well. In order, I guess. Uh, the pouch uh, on the barbarian's belt is empty, apart from strange-looking dried meat wrapped in cloth. Well, as long as that's not long pig, I'm going to eat the meat because. Uh, Oh uh, yeah, took a beating from the orcs, I'm hoping. The meat contains herbs which will increase your strength. You gain three stamina points, yay. What would you like to do now? Um uh, 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 I don't wanna Hmm. Hmm. I think I might expect the alcove. Walk slowly over the floor, carefully checking for, for, for any more hidden traps, and you see the goblet contains a sparkling red liquid. See, 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 see now, I've already had the, uh, this isn't death liquid thing earlier on with the bamboo. So I'm not going to fall for the fact that they're going to try and pretend this is a poison. So we're not going to drink it, we're going to leave the chamber and continue west passage soon leads to a junction. You notice more footprints on the floor, possibly as many as three pairs heading north from the passageway. You decide to follow them. The passage opens up into a wide cavern, which is darker and much drier. Ahead you see footprints gradually fade and disappear. There's a large idol in the center of the cavern, standing approximately six meters high. It has jeweled eyes as big as your fist. There are two giant stuffed bird-like creatures standing on either side of the idol. You wish to climb the idol and take jewels if you wish to walk through the cavern to know. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be inspired by the AD&D uh, rule books and the first edition, and I'm going to climb and take the jewels. It's the worst that can happen. The idol is very small and will be difficult to come climb. Do you have any rope? Oh, yes, we do. You make the rope into a lasso, whirl it around the hair, your head and throw it into the idol's head, smiling happily as it falls around its neck. You tighten the noose uh, and start to climb, hauling yourself up the rope. You are soon at the top of the idol, sitting on a bridge on its nose, holding onto the rope. You draw your sword and wonder which eye to pry out first uh, left eye right eye 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 left eye if you touch your idol's emerald eye you hear a cracking sound below you looking down you're shocked to see the two stuffed birds flying off oh that's cool they're going to attack me uh, their wings flap in jerky mo mo movements but they are soon above you looking set to uh, set to attack they are going to attack me the fly fight the flying guardians one at a time but your skill is reduced by two because of your restricted positions well um hmm with this skill and this could be the shortest ever let's play i've done of fighting fantasy last in just one video uh, let's see uh what we are going to do see how tough they are i can't remember right gonna get blood here Blood. So, uh, oh, okay. Hopefully, the dice gods will be kind to me. Okay, they are not going to be kind. This one, ouch. Okay, fine. Maybe that's no. Yeah, come on, one more hit for this guy. No, that's gonna hurt. No. That, now, dice stop mine from rolling. 
Okay, he's dead. I'm not doing too good. You have defeated the first Flying Guardian. You must face the second Flying Guardian. Oh, it's even harder. He's going <sighs> to... I'm so almost dead. Oh. Oh, I'm not doing that again. I haven't even touched him yet. Is it going to be... Oh, I'm getting done by a flying guardian. Oh, come on. <laughs> Shortish. This is... I'm dead. I'm out. You're being overcome by your enemies. Ouch. You were cruelly defeated. You were dead. You have failed your quest to best Baron Sukhumvit's trial of champions and claim 10,000 gold pieces. The end. The only thing I can say that was almost half hour dead on. Um, right. Okay, I'm going to post this, I'm not going to re-record it, I'm going to post it. If you'd like to see me retry a Death Trap Drawing Death Trap Dungeon, let me know in the comments and I shall potentially get something out next week, hopefully. <laughs> if not, if not, I don't know, perhaps we can try something else. I think I can unlock some of these or something, who knows, I might just retry it anyway. But anyway, let me know what you'd like to do in the comments and we'll do it then. Until the next video, guys, stay safe, take care.